Good afternoon, everyone. I certainly hope that you can hear the bells tolling. I have just a couple quick announcements. First, I want to thank you for being with us this noonday. Um, I want to also welcome the members of the Church of the Atonement and St. Albans um, that participate in our worship service over Facebook Live. Um, I just want to reiterate that Morning Prayer and Compline have new Zoom links, and you should get a email two hours ahead of each of those services that you can use to access both of those services over Zoom. Um, so it is no one's fault but your own if you use the old link, which I was guilty of this morning. Okay. Um, the Adult Ministry for Caring Fellowship will resume this Thursday at 5.30 for parishioner trivia, um, which promises to be a lot of fun. And you get to learn a lot of things about other parishioners that you never knew. Like there's one, it's, well, there's two that speak Portuguese that both lived in Recife at the same time. There you go. Uh, Canterbury Club greatly appreciates the donations of pens, pencils, snacks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and the list goes on and on, helping students get through final exams. Um, we are still accepting donations through Sunday, April 18th. Um, please give the church office a call um, if you're going to drop anything off. We're very grateful for your generosity. Also, there are, are several Sundays that are available if you'd like to um, honor someone with the altar flowers. We will announce who you are honoring that day, and you just send in your check um, to the office, and we will uh, get your name listed for that offering. Um, watch for more notices to come in Canterbury Tales with the dates that are available. Um, and if you have volunteered to sponsor the flowers and have not sent your check in, uh, please do so today. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. Um, finally, um, some sad news. Today we'll be, we will be praying for the repose of the soul of Dorothy Coleman, Ben Coleman's mom, Stacy Coleman's mother-in-law. Please keep the entire family in your prayers this day. And now let us prepare ourselves to worship. Quiet our minds, O God, and gladden our hearts, that as we come together to worship you this day, we may be open to your holy presence and find that this very space is the gate of heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the ministries of Edward Thomas Demby and Henry Beard Delaney, bishops of your church, who, though limited by segregation, served faithfully to your honor and glory. Assist us, we pray, to break through the limitations of our own time, that we may minister in obedience to Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Malachi. My covenant with him was a covenant of life and well-being, which I gave him. This called for reverence and revered me and stood in awe of my name. True instruction was in his mouth, and no wrong was found on his lips. He walked with me in integrity and uprightness, and he turned many from iniquity. For the lips of a priest should guard knowledge, and people should seek instruction from his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for the day is Psalm 119, verses 161 through 168, found on page 777 in your Book of Common Prayer. Princes persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in all of your words. I rejoice at your word like, who, like one who finds great spoil. 
I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day, I praise you for your righteousness ordinances. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. I hope for your salvation, O Lord, and I fulfill your commandments. My soul keeps your decrees. I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and decrees for all my eyes, for all my ways are before you. Here ends the psalm. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and complete his work. Do you not say four months more and then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I like to say that even though I figured you're already seated, there are some people in the church that are not. So that helps them know when they're supposed to be seated. You know, last Sunday is called Doubting Sunday. It's also called Humor Sunday in some areas of the country where uh, churches after the solemn time of Lent and Easter offer some type of joviality on that Sunday. And we, we opted not to necessarily do that exactly. Although we like to incorporate humor in all of our worship services, and believe me, we could run a series of bloopers uh, from our recordings that would be hilarious. In fact, I hope we are collecting those. Um, but today we are celebrating the first two African-American bishops in the Episcopal Church, Edward Thomas Demby and Henry Beard Delaney. And they were instrumental in the struggle of minorities to take their place in the highest positions of leadership in the church and often hostile to their presence. I mean, can you imagine your very presence uh, feeling the hostility of other people um, as you are trying to spread God's holy word? Um, Demby, born in Delaware, uh, he attended Howard University, became an Episcopalian while serving as the Dean of Students at Paul Quinn College in Texas. Bishop John Spaulding recognized Demby's gifts for ministry and sent him to work in the Diocese of Tennessee. Ordained as a deacon in 1898 and a priest the next year, he served parishes in Illinois, Missouri, and Florida. In 1907, he returned to Tennessee as rector of Emmanuel Church in Memphis. He was also appointed as the archdeacon for colored work with responsibilities for segregated colored convocations in the South. While serving as archdeacon, Demby was elected Bishop Suffragan for colored work in the Diocese of Arkansas. Now a Suffragan Bishop, just so that you know, is a little bit more than an assisting bishop. And so it's, it's a term that's used, there is the Bishop Diocesan, which is the head guy, and then there is the Bishop Suffragan, which is right under him, and then there can be a series of assisting bishops that can help, and those typically are retired bishops, the assisting bishops, but a Suffragan bishop is called when the congregations reach a level that it's impossible for the Bishop Diocesan to reach all the churches in that diocese as required by canonical law within a two year grace period. Um, so he was elected Bishop Suffragan for colored work in the Diocese of Arkansas in the province of the Southwest. A major contributor to the westward expanse and expansion of the Episcopal Church, Demby, Demby drew African Americans into the church through his work with black hospitals, schools, and orphanages. Despite the difficulties he encountered among the white leadership in the South, 
Demby worked his whole life toward the full recognition of African Americans in the Episcopal Church. Now, uh, Bishop Henry Beard Delaney was ordained to the Episcopate the same year as Edward Demby. Born a slave in St. Mary's, Georgia, Delaney also served as archdeacon for colored work, working in the Diocese of North Carolina. He was called to be Bishop Suffragan for colored work in the Diocese of North Carolina, but his ministry extended into the Diocese of East and Western North Carolina, South Carolina, and Upper South Carolina. Delaney was a strong advocate for the integration of African-American Episcopalians into the wider church, despite the Jim Crow laws of the day and the efforts of many leaders of the white majority in the church who viewed the presence of men like Demby and Delaney as threats to their power and their authority. And we celebrate these two bishops, these, the first two African-American bishops in the Episcopal church who led the way and I would just say that while we've come a long way, we have a long way yet to go. Um, yes, we have an African-American presiding bishop. But I think we have a lot more work to do on both sides um, to bring the racial issues in our country together. Um, if we are true followers of Jesus, one of the things that the gospel or the actual, the colleague for today said that um, these two men, they actually, um, though limited by segregation, served faithfully to your honor and your glory. And I guess at the end of the day, if each of us can say that we served with that same kind of faithfulness, with that same kind of honor to God, that these two bishops did in their episcopate, then I think when we do finally reach heaven's gate, we'll hear the words, well done. But it's going to take a lot of work, and it's going to take all of us working together where things aren't equal, where things aren't appropriate. Um, and if we are truly practicing our baptismal vows where we seek and search Christ in all persons, that includes all people uh, that of, of African descent, of Asian descent, of European descent. Um, we are all called to be the children of God, and we must recognize each other as the children of God, always. Amen. And now we're going to start the, the litany. And one of the things that I, I would like to pay us to pay specific attention to today is when we get to the prayer for racial justice, there'll be a pause right before that prayer. And I'm gonna ask you to pray for racial justice in America. And now let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers this day. O God of compassion, giver of life and health, we pray your healing mercies upon all who are in any way affected by the outbreak of the COVID-19 coronavirus. Comfort and sustain those who have been stricken, relieve their pain and restore them your gifts of gladness and your gifts of strength. Grant to all in authority the courage to make wise decisions that are essential for the common good and strengthen them to lead institutions that care for those whom they serve. Protect those who are compelled to work farms and fields, city streets and factories that put them in danger with very little pay. Watch over all first responders and those in the medical professions whose duty it is to care for the sick. Guard them from all danger and keep them safe in the knowledge that it is through their sacrifice and their service that the health of the whole community is promoted. Mercifully accept these our prayers, O God of all comfort, and our only help in time of need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. 
God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Men, broken relationships, restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and especially this day, Dorothy Coleman. And uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit, those who are bereaved, Ben and Stacy and the whole Coleman family. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And in your light, we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you have made us in your image and called us to be the body of Christ. We have not honored your image in one another. We have not loved others as you have loved us. Forgive us our sin of not seeing you in each other. This pandemic has highlighted the racial disparities in our communities. The violence toward people of color has sickened us. Now give us strength to stand up and work with all the strength we possess to bring racial justice in our church and in our community. Give us the will to do your will in this work. In the name of Jesus, who always stood with people who were oppressed, even when it cost him his life. Amen. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned against, against you in, in thought, word, word, and deed, by, by what, what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Save us and help us. We humbly beseech you, O Lord. The almighty Lord, who was a strong tower to all who put their trust in him, to whom all things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense and make you know and feel that the only name under heaven given for health and salvation is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now as our custom, we lay hands on ourselves 
if there's no one near you, lay your hand on your forehead and at the proper time, make the sign of the cross on your forehead. We offer ourselves, our souls and bodies in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, beseeching our Lord Jesus Christ to sustain us with his presence, to drive away all sickness of body and spirit and to give you that victory of life and peace, which will enable you to serve him both now and evermore. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace be, peace peace be with you. Peace be with you. Just another very brief announcement. Um, as we prepare the table, um, I would invite you again to, to pray for our nation, for our world, for our congregation, and pray for your clergy. Thank you. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer B on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. From your goodness, we have this bread to offer, the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual food. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. From your goodness, we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for us a cup of blessing. Blessing, blessing to God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, 
in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, According to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Augustine of Canterbury, Bridget of Kildare, and David of Wales, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. And now I invite all those who are unable to receive the consecrated bread and wine this day, but who long for the grace and blessing of God through our Savior, Jesus Christ, to join me in this prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. 
since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with grace and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. <clears throat> and now let us say the post-communion prayer together. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may God the Father bless you, God the Son heal you, and God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the Holy and Undivided Trinity guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to his heavenly country where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I thank you all for being here today, and I look forward to seeing you either at Compline or morning prayer. <laughs>